Hello everyone. Uh, today I am going to talk on uh, RT-PCR, which is commonly used to diagnostic test for COVID-19. So the question here is: Is RT-PCR is an ultimate test to diagnose COVID-19? Since we are every one of us are believing that RT-PCR would be the ultimate test. So I would like to uh, clarify some queries related to this. One of the most commonly used diagnostic test for COVID-19 pandemic is, as you all know that reverse transcriptase polymerase chain reaction simply called RT-PCR by using person's respiratory sample to detect viral particles. So clinicians usually ask uh, me that the patient is symptomatic uh, but test is negative. CT findings suggest of viral pneumonia but test is negative. And history of close contact is there and travel history is there for the individual but test negative. And one most important uh, aspect is two days before the test was positive but now it's negative. Why is it all happening? So, but negatives, but negatives in spite of symptoms, in spite of uh, findings in CT, in spite of history of close contact and travel, and in spite of test post to earlier. So for this, one thing we can say that these are all would be considered as false negative test. So, as we all of know, what is false negative test? A negative result that indicates negative, sorry, a test result indicates negative in spite of having specific disease or condition in that particular person. That means simply to say, even though the infection and disease is present in the individual, the test result becomes positive by RT-PCR. And what are the causes for this false negative test? One is human error and next one is natural error. Now we will see what are the possible human errors and what is the natural error in detecting uh, the COVID-19 uh, uh, by means of RT-PCR testing. So human errors, the pre-analytical errors are there. One is right sample. So selection and collection of samples should be proper. There are so many types of samples are being processed in different institutions. Nasopharyngeal swab, oropharyngeal swabs, bronchialvalar lavages, some areas uh, sputum, and uh, in some areas uh, the uh, other uh, secretions. But the CDC and WHO is clearly mentioning that nasopharyngeal swab is most appropriate test uh, for doing this RT-PCR test. If due to lack of uh, technique in collecting the nasopharyngeal swab in some of the areas where the technical personnel is not available or ENT person or microbiologist not available, the people are going for the oropharyngeal swab which may give some kind of false negative results. So right sample is most important that would be nasopharyngeal swab. Next one is right collection. While collecting the sample, this uh, the sample collection should be proper and uh, it should uh, collect the sample from an appropriate area of the nasopharynx. And once you collect the sample, the right storage also very important. The right storage means it has to uh, uh, maintain, we have to maintain the sample to once you collect it at uh, 4 degrees centigrade, strictly at 4 degrees centigrade or below 4 degrees centigrade. And another important uh, pre-analytical would be, analytical error would be the standard VTM. We have to use always standard VTM any contamination of VTM or the improper pH of P, this VTM that is viral transport medium always gives a false negative results. 
and the next one is the appropriate transportation once you collect the sample till it reaches to the laboratory and till the test get it done it has to be maintained at uh, 4 degrees uh, centigrade or below 4 degrees centigrade otherwise it may give false negative results and analytical errors like technical errors uh, if due to the lacking of technique among the technical personnel and the technique being used also is responsible for this particular problem and kits and reagents to be used always we have to use the standard kits there are so many kits rtpcr kits are available in the market now but we have to use the right kit with the right reagents either rna extraction kits or the uh, or the multiplication uh, in equipment whatever it may be all the kits and reagents you to be used all primers everything you have to be used from standard laboratories and equipment equipment maintenance according to the SOP and always while you are using kits also the suitable kits has to be used for suitable equipment for example one particular type of equipment another type of reagents should not be used this mismatch of uh, kits as well as the equipments also are responsible for the false negative results so this all comes under technical errors and limit of detection this is most important lod that is minimum amount of rna that's covid 19 rna that will be detected by the test is also very very important some kits are having high limit of detection that means they can detect when the viral load is high if the viral load is low they may give false negative results and some of the kits will detect two low levels of viruses which is considered as too low limit of detection that means even the few number of virals are present in the sample it may give positive and which may not be having the multiplying capacity and which may not able to produce the disease but still the test becomes positive if the kit has got uh, the low limit of detection which may give false positive results and the natural errors the natural errors are mainly uh, depending on the immune system of the host as you all know that is very difficult to understand uh, the uh, the role of uh, the activities taken up by the immune system of the host uh, for the viral replication see anyhow that's viral rna load uh, if that is below the limit of detection that's because of involvement of immune system if the immune system is not effective the virals uh, may replication may affect it and that may give low levels of uh, the viral rna load and if the viral rna load is low the below the limit of detection of that particular twist being used to do the rt pcr then that will be given the false negative results this is of course the involvement of the immune system this is also has got that particular important role and what is the reliability of this rt pcr test according to the john hopkins institutes uh, institute uh, uh, the study recently in the month of uh, may 2000, uh, 2020 and generally that uh, sensitivity would be 70 to 90 percent that means the if you do the test uh, from a suspected individual the uh, the uh, generally the sensitivity would be 70 to 90 percent that means if you do 100 tests from suspected uh, uh, 100 suspected individuals 10 to 30 percent of the test may give false negative results but it varies from the day of infection the false negative would be 100 percent if you do the test on day one of infection or contact 67 to 70 percent on day four of infection 
but the false negatives would be 20% uh, even on day of infection. That means even three days after symptoms onset. According to the John Hopkins Institute study, uh, the incubation period would be around five days. That's why we always we consider the seven days for the yes, for the positive or upper limit. We are keep it as seven days. So according to that particular institute, even after three days after the symptoms onset, uh, in 20% of the cases, the test would be uh, negative, which gives a false negative results. So this is about uh, the um, some of the queries being raised by my colleagues and friends and some of the other clinicians regarding the positive RT-PCR testing. So this while doing this RT-PCR testing uh, from the sample collection to and also the transportation of the sample until you perform the test there are so many factors being involved. Of course we are not supposed to ignore the natural immune system of the host which plays a major role in the viral multiplication and detection of this particular viruses. So keeping all these things in mind while you are sending the RT-PCR test. So don't think that always the RT-PCR test may give the correct results in spite of infection and in spite of, I mean, in the presence of infection and also in the presence of clinical manifestation. Always the false positives or uh, I mean uh, 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 by a possible event in this one and that's why always we have to uh, repeat the sample in case of uh, false negative results. In case of most of the times the false uh, positives are a bit rare but false uh, negatives are very very common that's why uh, you have to repeat the sample uh, four or five days after uh, the sampling even the test becomes negative in spite of symptomatology in spite of positive findings in uh, CT and also in spite of uh, test positive two days before and uh, negative now once you do. So this is about uh, the uh, some of the clarifications regarding RT-PCR testing and thank you very much for uh, careful watching. And if you have any queries in this regard, you can ask me the questions through my email address. Thank you very much.